shall we begin? Today, we're going to work with some Ujjayi breathing, which I want you to try and take with you throughout the practice. I'll remind you and I'll drop a little, remember Ujjayi every now and again, but it's okay if you forget to do it. So Ujjayi breathing, you sort of close the back of your throat slightly and it's like you're trying to make an oceany sound. So you know when, um, it's not a, quite the conch shells, but you, you know those, uh, they're the like whiter shells with the brown splatters on them. And if you put them to your ear, you can hear the ocean. It's that kind of breathing. So you want to create like a sound as you're breathing in and out. And we'll breathe in and out through our nose. Close the back of the throat just slightly so you can create that restriction. And you're just breathing in as deep as you can. And then slowly exhaling again, keeping that throat in that like restricted space. And then just turn down this music before we begin. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's start. So you start inhaling, closing the throat. Exhale. In. Filling up your lung capacity and out. And keep going at your own pace.
push up, making sure your last round ends on your exhale, and then allow your breathing to return to normal. So like I said at the beginning, try and remember to go into a Jaya breathing while we're in our poses. The reason it actually works so nicely is that it reminds you to breathe. Because so often we forget to breathe, uh, especially if we're holding a pose that's a little bit challenging and we can feel a little bit of pain in the body. Again, uh, uh, our first reaction is to hold your breath until it's over. So if you're reminding yourself to breathe with the Jaya breath, you're more focused on your breathing because you're actually hearing your breathing inside of yourself. So just do your best. That's all we're asked for. Okay, so we're going to start off on our knees, but instead of sitting with our knees closed like we did the other day, we're going to open our legs. Again, remember to tuck your hips under, lift in the belly, relax your shoulders into their sockets nicely so the rhomboids pull down just gently. And then we're going to take our arms up into the air. You're going to grab one wrist. So let's start off left hand. We're pulling with the right arm. And you're pulling away to the opposite side until you feel a nice stretch going up the side of the body, up the arm. Remember to pull in that Ojaya breathing because I am planning on holding poses a little bit longer today. Try not to let your neck go into strain. Also make sure that you keep tucking these hips, don't go into an arch as you try to pull your body longer. Keep tucked under and lengthen that arm away from you. Try and go a little bit deeper. And up we come. Over to the other side, so now we're grabbing our right arm with our left hand, pulling it long and over the opposite side. Keep tucking your hips under, keeping the tummy active. take our one arm and start with the right one and feel like it's pulling away from us it's sort of in line with that the opposite knee and then we're going to go down with our other hand onto the floor and feel that arm being pulled long as if it's trying to curl around that knee you're tucking your hips you're lifting in the belly and arms pulling long even round the upper back slightly so that you're feeling a stretch down the back of the shoulder blades into the QLs, down even into your bum a little bit. Pull that arm just a little bit more away from you and come up. Let's go to the other side. Again, like a 45 degree angle following the angle of the knee. Lengthen that arm away. Curl your body into Bola Mikisi and feel it being pulled longer. And slowly come up. We're going to get into our next stretches again today. Um, remember that we've got a little tennis ball sitting on the side of the neck that we're going over towards. So you don't want to crunch the neck down. You keep on lifting up 
and over. So let's grab the left side of our head with our right hand, lift up and over that tennis ball, tuck the hips, let the, arm, the shoulders stay down and let it pull up towards the ear and gently pull your head towards your shoulder. You should be feeling a nice stretch down the side of the neck going into the shoulder a little bit. And slowly release as we go to the other side. Lift up and over that tennis ball and pull your head gently towards the shoulder, keeping the shoulder down. slowly release okay the next one we're doing gets into sort of this front jugular space so just be gentle with yourself because you, uh, if you feel yourself getting dizzy you just release and come out of it and um, you're going to be moving your chin around until you find your stretchy spot so let's turn our chin towards our right shoulder then we lift the chin up towards the ceiling and then you slowly start dropping it backwards trying to find where you get to this front jugular stretch. Keep your jaw closed and that's where you'll find that stretch pulling up into the jawbone a bit. And gently come out and go to the other side. So we turn towards our left shoulder, up towards the ceiling and backwards. a bit of massage on these jugular muscles because again in this techno age where we're constantly looking down or um, uh, jutting our head forward these muscles can get quite tense so you're going to grab your muscles with your opposite hand just because it feels easier to massage that way and you pull and squeeze starting at the top of your neck <laughs> Release and drop down a bit. Release and drop down a bit. Release and drop down a bit. And the other side, starting at the top, just uh, starting at your jaw, just under your ear. Squeeze and pull.
and draw it down a bit. And draw it down a bit. And drop down a bit. And one last one down. And release. Okay, so now you're still staying on your knees and turning sideways so that you can see better. So uh, usually we would go down in child's pose with both arms in front of us, keeping our tummy lifted. This time we're just sending one away and we feel like that arm's being pulled, 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 pulled. And then you can rest your head on the floor. You should be feeling a nice stretch sort of in the lat area. Remember to pull in that Ojaya breathing. start pushing our chest towards the hand that's on the knee. So it goes a little bit deeper into the stretch in the arm that's stretched out. Slowly swap sides. So now your other arm stretches out like it's being pulled away from you. Initially, we're just dropping our head onto the floor, staying in that child's pose kind of position. Keep lifting your tummy so you're sucking your belly back towards your spine. Now you place the hand that's not stretched out on your knee and push your body towards that um, bent arm side. Again, you should be feeling a little bit deeper in the scap kind of muscles. into one of our twists so again make sure that you're not arching in this position but tucking your hips under lifting in the belly we take our let's start with our right hand onto our left knee and this time we're going to be leaning backwards making sure you keep pushing your hips forward you lean back and twist towards the left knee keep trying to push yourself around sucking your belly backwards side keep those hips tucked under twist suck the belly back lean back slightly and push your body around And 
knees come out. We're going to lean forward again. The knees are still open. Your feet are together, but make sure that they're not on top of each other, but on the actual floor. Lean forward so that there's a bit of a gap between your knees and your hands, and your shoulders, elbows, arms are in alignment. Spread your fingers out. Make sure the soft parts of your elbows are twisting open and you're lifting under the armpit so your sternum pulls back. And we're just going to do a few lift up kind of drills. So you're pushing down on your feet, sucking your belly back and pushing down on your arms. You come up onto your arms so that there again, um, wrist, elbows and shoulders are in alignment. And push up with your feet. You're not straightening. You're just coming up so that you're working your arms a bit. Suck the belly, suck the belly, suck the belly, and slowly come down again. If you find this really intense on your toes, the world won't end if you go up onto your tippy toes and then push up. And let's go again. And down. And up again. Keep lifting in the belly and down. Up again and down. And you can come to your child's pose, stretching your arms out as far as you can on your tippy fingers, trying to drop your sternum down onto the floor, rather your chest. you can tuck your toes and you can open your feet a bit so that they're not tucked uh, at an angle behind you place your hands nicely on the floor push down in them you might go slightly over them and that's fine we're now starting to work on uh, the strength for handstands so you're leaning forward and you're going to just be bouncing up so you push off your knees and you bounce it's okay if you don't get far this is right at the beginning when we're just pushing a bump up a bit. Make sure you're lifting in the chest, lifting in the armpits, and up. Push up. Push up. Push up. Push up. Make sure you're keeping your belly lifted and your hips are tucking under, it helps. And push up. Push up. One last one, push up. Well done. Come sit on your shins for a little bit, take a short break. Okay, place your hands back on the floor. Lift in the armpits, lift in the sternum, come up onto your tippy toes and just push up, not quite down and facing dog, because we're not leaning backwards, but we're actually just wanting to come up over onto the wrists. Suck the belly, push down in the arms, push your shoulders away from you. Drop them and push. Drop them and push. Drop and push and gently come down. Remember to pull in that Ujjayi breathing and get the air circulating in your body. And I'm going to give you a moment just in case there's nothing around you, but you want to get against a wall or a couch, or a chair. We're not climbing up the wall just yet, we're just using it to lift our bodies a bit. So I'm gonna walk myself backwards towards my wall. My feet are against the wall, and my hands are still in position under my shoulders as if I were on a hands and, 
Oh, knees and feet. Oh my goodness. Hands and knees position. And then you're going to start pushing up in the armpits and your shoulders, your sternum lifts up and you start crawling up the wall. Bend, knees are bent. You just want to come up and over the wrists and push, push and release, push and release, push and release, push, hold it up and come back down. Whew. I don't want to do too many of those in case you guys don't have a wall nearby. Okay, you can come back down, take a moment to breathe, again, Ujaya. And up we come to standing. You can come stand at the front of your mat as we get into a bit of a Surya Namaska sun salutation. Helps on a sunny day here in the south of Africa. Okay, make sure that your knucks of your feet, the sides of your feet, the heels of your feet are rooting down into the ground and you're lifting in the arches. Your knees are turning slightly out so your bum starts squeezing, pushing your hips more forward. Your hands scoop, pulling the energy up towards the ceiling and feel your body being pulled long, 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 long. Then do your swan dive down, sucking that belly down up towards your spine and allow yourself to just hang for a moment. Keep sucking the belly back up and trying to straighten your legs. There's a slight bend, that's fine. You don't have to be touching the floor either. If you're sitting in a straightened position and your hands are hanging, that's good. You just do your best. Keep breathing, Ujjayi breath. You can bend your knees, place your hands on the floor. Let's take our right leg back into lunge position. Then you're dropping your knee onto the floor. Then you're using your left hand to push the left knee outwards away from you. As you lean in, pushing your right hip towards the floor. Remember to squeeze the right bum to help keep the hips tucked under. Lift in the belly and try and lean towards the floor. This is getting a nice stretch in the hip flexors. You can put your toes, your back foot toes on the floor if you want to, or you can keep them tucked. It's much of a muchness. Push your body up, making sure that your strength is in this front leg, tucking the hips under, you're still leaning into that leg, and then you're going to grab the back ankle with the same hand as the back leg, so we're not grabbing opposites today, and make sure that you keep the hips squared, sucking the belly in, and then try and lean forward into that front leg. This is just intensifying that um, hip flexor stretch. Keep Ujjayi breathing. Gently release the back leg. Push that left uh, knee away again and try and go a little bit deeper into this lizard pose. Come 
Come back up, leaning your bum towards your back foot and straighten the front leg. Think about sternum, pulling towards your shin as opposed to your head to your knee. So you're feeling very lengthened up the spine. And then you should feel a nice stretch up the top of the shin as well as in the hammies. Gently lean forward into that lizard position again, pushing your knee away from you. Remember to squeeze this back bum muscle, pushing your hips down. Slowly we come back again, dropping the bum towards the back foot, lengthening the front leg and our sternum comes towards our shin again. Keep sucking the belly back towards your spine, you're trying to get very skinny in the abdomen. Gently come back up, lift that back leg and push your hands down into the floor, lifting in the armpits and lifting the sternum away from that front leg and take it back into your plank position. If you need to, pop your knees onto the floor and now we come into Chaturanga. Up into our Cobra position, remember these feet are pushing gently against the floor, your hips are tucking under as you push up. Unrolling your neck. Keep these shoulders down. Push the hips forward. Feel the sternum being pulled in front of you. Gently lower back down. I'm just shifting my body down a bit. And you're going to bring one leg, let's do the left leg, up to the side of you. You want to be leaning into this leg so that knee pushes away from you and you're trying to uh, lie on your front. So this is a bit of a half frog position. left leg and let's go to the right side bring that leg up from a 90 degree angle and then pushing the knee away from you and you're pushing your hips towards the ground so squeezing the bum tucking your hips under
and she can release. And now we want to try and get both legs in that kind of position, which is going to be challenging for some of us. So you're just lifting your body, get your knee where you can, in line with the hips, similar to what we did the other day, but now we're dropping our chest onto the floor. Keep the tummy lifted, lower back um, curved as opposed to arched, tuck under. Excuse the kids in the background. Remember to go into your jai breathing. Remember to keep breathing, the more you breathe, the more you trick your body into relaxing. Just try and hold the pose a bit longer. Remember if your knees are getting sore, just double up your mat or get some cushions to put under the knees so they don't hurt. slowly come out whichever way you can. Still lying on your belly. You want to make sure that the hips are tucking under. You're squeezing your bum around. We're going to take our left arm out to the side. Feel like it's being pulled away from you. And then we're going to start twisting towards the right, coming up onto the hip and sending the right leg behind us. You can keep your head relaxed on the floor. This is a nice arm stretch going into the intercostal muscles on the front of your chest. Keep your bum working, pushing your hips forward, tucking your belly, um, tucking your hips under, but tucking your belly towards your spine. Slowly we go over to the other side. So now the right hand gets pulled away from us. Turn onto your right hip, taking your left leg behind you. Keep these hips tucked under, lifting in the belly.
back onto our bellies. Get your hands in line with your shoulders. Tuck the hips under, push down with the tops of the feet. Keep your chin tucked towards your chest and push up into your cobra again. Oh, I'm just moving a little bit forward. I'm getting off my mat. Tuck your toes. Feel like your coccyx are being pulled up by a string up into your downward facing dog. Take a step in if you need to. Remember these shoulders are wrapped into their sockets and pushing away from you. Suck the belly up. And start walking the dog slowly. So we're standing on one leg for a bit. Then the other leg. It's getting deeper calf stretches happening. One leg. And the other. One leg. And the other. And get ready to bring your right leg to the front of your mat. Pulling us back into that lunge position that we started off in. The back leg drops its knee to the floor. You lean forward and you push the right knee away from you, opening up into that lizard pose. Make sure you're tucking your hips under and this back bum muscle is squeezing the hips forward. Keep doing your, your jaya breathing. Push down in that front foot and come up and get ready to grab your left ankle with your left hand. Keep the hips tucked under, keep the tummy working. Deeper hip flexor stretch. Gently let go, coming back into that lizard pose, try and get a little bit deeper, squeezing this back bum muscle forward and pushing your front knee away from you. And slowly bring the bum towards your back foot, straightening out the front leg. Remember to think about your sternum pulling towards your shin and remember to keep this bum uh, squared so you're not opening up the hip to the side or in weird, wonderful ways. Trying to keep the hips squared, sucking the belly backwards and leaning forward, lengthening through the body. Again, remember to breathe. And slowly come back into your lizard position, pushing that front knee away from you, squeezing the back bum to push the hips into the floor, lifting the belly. Back we 
can straighten the front leg with that sternum towards shin. Suck belly back. forward, bringing your left foot to meet your right foot and hang down in your forward fold. Suck your belly back up towards the ceiling. And up we come, pulling energy with us as our arms pull long towards the ceiling. And hands to heart. And take a moment to breathe. And slowly, iteratively, we're keeping our feet together and tucking our hips under as we slowly come down. Down, down, down into a squat, but a closed legged squat. Keep rounding your hips under, not going into an arch. Tuck under, roll down, 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 as low as you can get. And then you can pop your bum onto the floor. Keeping this nice rounded position, we're gonna do our rolls, tucking and rolling over, sucking belly backwards to help create that rounded lower back. Rounded lower back as we come up. Rounded lower back as we go down. And this time as we roll back, we're going to go into that Halasana plow position. So as you roll, you get onto your back, push your hands down into the floor, lift the bum into the air. Make sure that you're sucking your belly backwards and your neck is nice and long so the chin isn't squashed against the sternum, but it's lifted just gently so that your neck is relaxed, your shoulders are relaxed and pulling down gently. Try and slowly get your feet towards the floor. your hands just at the tops of your bum and lift your legs up into your shoulder stand. Suck your belly back, keep your shoulders pulling down and relaxed. Squeeze the bum. Slowly bring your knees towards your head, just to rest them on your forehead. Release your hands and roll up. <sighs> well done. Come to sit nicely on your bum with your legs stretched out in front of you. And we're going to do some forward fold stretching. Tuck the hips under, feel these legs pushing down into the ground gently, arms being pulled long, and reach for your toes or your ankles or your shins, and think about your sternum being pulled towards these areas as opposed to your head.
ready release. Let's come into our Bhadakonasana position, our butterfly or froggy. Uh, your heels are pulling as close as they can towards your Vauxhall bonnet. Fingers interlace around your toes, ease your bum squeezes to pull the knees towards the floor. And you think about your sternum being pulled towards your feet. Remember to keep breathing in your jaya breath. And slowly release. I'm going to be a little bit kinder to you today. Instead of doing our double log position or double pigeon, we're going to sit up nicely, keeping your hips tucked under. We're going to lift our ankle towards our opposite knee. You can either have your hands behind you and sit in a relaxed place and then bring your other foot closer to get a deeper stretch. Or you can send that foot away a little bit further and lean forward. Breathing and trying to relax into the pose. Push yourself a little bit deeper if you're able. And slowly come out and swap legs. Keep tucking your hips under and lifting your belly. Gently release. And that is the end of the hard work, guys. So you can get your clothes back on, pop on your socks and your warm things if you need to, because some of us are going into spring instead of winter, and get ready for duty time.
free to lie down or sit for meditation. You can get pillows, you can hop up onto your couch, however you are comfy. Close your eyes. Let's start taking three deep breaths in. Deep breath. Exhale with a sigh. Deep breath in. Exhale with a sigh. And last one. Deep breath in. Exhale with a sigh. Allow your body to feel heavy and gooey like it's melting into the floor. All your muscles completely letting go of tension. Calves, quads, thumb, stomach. Arms and shoulders relax, and your face relaxes. You feel your eyes relax, and your forehead and your jaw. As you start moving into this place of relaxation, bring your awareness into your forehead. Breathe in three breaths into your forehead. Just focusing your attention on that area while you breathe. And we bring our awareness into our throat in three breaths, focusing your awareness in your throat. into our chest. We take three deep breaths into our chest. your awareness down into your stomach. Three deep breaths into the stomach. And then down into the sacrum area. And we take three deep breaths into the sacrum. Now you imagine this energy is built up and it moves from that coccyx area slowly up the spine all the way to the top of your head and take three deep breaths into the crown space. And at the end of your third 
good exhale. Feel as your awareness now moves out the top of your head, up into the cosmos. Imagine traveling out of the layer of this planet into the stars, up through different layers. You see lights and the dark spaces between each layer and lights, dark spaces. And you keep moving up and up and up and up and up until you can't go any further up. And in this space, feel completely surrounded with peace, calm, and complete security. Feel as you just float in this bubble of safety, so much love surrounding you, peace, and knowing that everything is perfectly all right. Keep breathing in this beautiful energy, allowing it to seep throughout your entire body. this energy into your body, in through the layers of your aura, allowing it to settle into you and slowly start floating down through all the layers, through all the lights and darks, through the stars, through the atmosphere, down from the sky, pulling your awareness back through the crown of your head, down into your body. Imagine roots pulling down your legs into the earth, grounding you back onto this planet. And pull that earth energy up through your feet, all the way up through your body, back up to your crown. Nice deep breath in and exhale. Deep breath in and exhale. Deep breath in. And as you exhale, you start wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes and giving your body one last stretch before you come up and sit and feel free to join me in a one OM. Take a nice deep breath in. Your hands can be at your heart or your knees. And then we go OM. Oh. 